Some say I'm in tune with nature, but I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> A couple years ago, I got these bird feeders in the mail. They were from my friends at the Father and Son Fun 2015 channel. At least I think that's what they call it. Something like that. And they're pretty cool, you know? Little recycling going on right at my alley. And I screwed them to the trees, and they work out great. The only problem is, when they're screwed to the trees, the chipmunks climb the tree, and then they come. They fill their pouches, they leave, they come, fill their pouches, and leave. And they do that all day until it's empty. I don't like gluttony. <laughs> I don't mind feeding the chipmunks. They go under, under the bird feeders, pick up all the stuff on the ground, that's fine with me. They can do that all day long. But when they clean out the bird feeders, it takes away from what the birds have to eat. So I'm going to make a little change. I'm going to screw these together. And then I'm going to hang them from my cable with the other bird feeders. There we go. Double barrel bird feeder. <laughs> All you can eat buffet. There's six more right there. Now I've got six mice here. Last week I pulled a bucket out and I had three more mice and I had three more mice before that. It keeps on catching them. And that's important to me. I'm going to do whatever I can to keep my house and my family safe and having mice invading your living space is super dangerous they spread hantavirus and that stuff is no joke in 2005 my house burnt down because a rodent got in the wires my wood stove wasn't even going that day so I want to take a minute here to talk about something Whenever I show my bucket traps, I get a handful of responses that are similar to each other where they will say that the bucket traps are bar barbaric and I shouldn't use them. They're cruel. I should only use snap traps because they're more humane. I shouldn't kill anything I don't eat. I should just get a cat. And instead of killing them, I should just deter them and use Irish Spring soap and a lot of responses like that. I will give you the benefit of the doubt that you are saying all of these with good intention, but give me the benefit of the doubt. Extend me the same courtesy. Birds feed out of my hand. I build hundreds of bird feeders. I do a lot for wildlife. I'm not going to do something that is barbaric for the heck of it. I'm doing it with the bucket because it is the most effective method for me to keep the rodents under control here. Ask yourself this question. If you came home from work someday and everything you owned, all your worldly possessions and everything had been burnt to the ground while you were gone because of a rodent, would you be going, oh, they need a place to eat, oh, they have feelings too? No, you would not. Uh -huh. We saw a little mouse activity in the Jeep here. So I took a paper towel and I took a chunk of Irish spring soap, wrapped it up in a towel. I did that because I didn't want it to get hot in the glove compartment and have it like get all sticky. So I want to show you what I found. <laughs> all right. The paper towel is all shredded here. All right. The Irish Spring, they've been chewing on it. <laughs> I gave it a try, okay? But since they're chewing on it, I can't really call that a deterrent. 
So I'm putting a bucket trap in the Jeep. Because again, ask yourself this question. The mice get into your vehicle. So when you open the doors on a hot day, it reeks like mouse piss in here. Or they chew your wiring and now it's going to cost you a lot of money to have it fixed. Are you just going to say, oh, they need a place to live? Oh, they need a ride? You're going to be bullshit. And that's just the way it is. They're chewing on my owner's manual. Pissing on everything. All right. Look at the mouse shit. And that's with the Irish Spring soap right there. I'm sticking with the bucket traps. Oh, well, there's more in there. There's three more. Holy cow. Oh, look at oh them all. Oh my god. Look at all the mice. I thought there was only six. Now you just saw that. I'm dumping this. I thought there was only six mice in that pail. Let's take a closer look. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I'd be running myself ragged trying to tend snap traps. And the thing with snap traps is the mice see their family members in traps and then they go, I'm staying away from those things. But the buckets don't work that way. They keep on catching them. Barbaric? Them burning down my house is barbaric. This is what I'm doing right here, because this is the success I want. I don't want these little bastards in my house. I'm going to set up a trail camera watching over this, and we'll see what comes to eat them. Let's do that. He likes to help out with the project. <laughs> Well, there you go. Barbaric or not, I'm going to continue to use that because it's the most effective mousetrap I've ever used. And I got feelings too, you know. If you use my ideas, something you learn from my channel and it's helping you out, you put it on your channel or your Facebook page or something, put a link to my video. I'd appreciate it. Share the love. You know, if it's helping you out, help me out. Just share the love. What comes around goes around. People have been asking me when I'm going to do the videos on dog training and cabin building, where I'm going to talk about trusses and rafters and buying land and other topics. I'm going to save a lot of those for later in the winter. Because when we're snowed in up here, we don't have projects going on, I get kind of starved for content. But those topics, I can use a lot of my past footage while making the video. So I'm going to save a lot of those for later on. Of course, people have been asking about the puppy. They want a puppy update. So I can do that. <laughs> I'll show you. Oh. As you can see, she's growing like a weed. Her ears are starting to do the funky thing where they're working their way up to standing up like Frankie's. But they stay at that goofy stage for a while. <laughs> she's been getting some training. We're doing a little at a time. She's not as focused as Frankie was. Frankie was a lot further along at this age, but Frankie's one in a million, you know. A lot of people getting border collies think they're going to get a Frankie right out of the box, and I'll tell you, he's, he's an incredible dog. So, she shows some pretty good signs of intelligence. She adapts to routines really fast. It's not always a good thing, because <laughs> they anticipate your next move. 
That's why having a really intelligent dog sometimes is almost harder to train because they already anticipate your next move, for better or for worse. <laughs> but right now I'm just trying to teach her just the very basic stuff and doing it a little at a time. You kind of have to take each puppy as a case-by-case -case basis because some learn really quick. She's just bonkers. She wants to make a game out of everything, and she's timid. So the lessons come in really short bursts, just teaching her the basics. When I tell her to heal, I want her to come and hug my left side, sit, stay, things like that. I want to be able to get inside her mouth, look inside her mouth, be able to remove something from her mouth. If she's chewing on something I don't want her to chew on. And starting to get her, getting used to having her paws messed with. I don't like fighting with a dog when you need to clip their toenails. Well, Frankie is a gem with that. He knows the procedure, just hands you the paw, you can work through it. Nine times out of ten, he doesn't give you any fussing. With her, she's, you can get a couple of toenails done and then you just got to call it quits. And that's where you just got to be patient and train a little at a time. And then they learn through repetition. You know, she knows to sit and lay down. With the stay, she's got a long way to go with that. But she's coming into it. We picked up a new retractable leash. I had one years ago, but it was kind of a piece of crap. It was always getting buggered up. It had a rope. This is a nice flat lead on there. This is one Lori picked up on Amazon. I'll put a link down below. It's a godsend when you're working with a pup and you're training them, especially like on a sit stay where you walk away and then you call them. It's good that the leash just retracts into the device. Well, when I'm walking her, you know, I walk and I let her just wander around a bit and then I'll call her back to a heel. I always want my dog to come and sit tight against my leg on the left side. It's a really good thing to teach them if I'm in a situation where we're walking down the road and there's a vehicle coming or someone's walking a dog or a possible hazardous situation, I want her to come right when I say heel. Tap my left leg, she comes and sits. I have her under control. And when the leash just retracts like that, it's fantastic. Come. That's a little till the update. Alrighty, time for questions of the week. I'm just going to answer a couple here this morning because one is pretty involved. Before I get started, I just want to reassure everybody not to worry. I'm not going to go all potty mouth with my channel just because I said mouse shit and bullshit and called them little bastards during the mouse segment. But you got to be realistic, folks, when mice are destroying your stuff. They reach far and beyond the category of little bastards. And it is what it is. But I, you ought to know by now, I don't use much profanity in my videos. But the mice bring it out in me. <laughs> With good reason. Okay, first question. A couple weeks ago, you saw Frankie tied to the front deck. <laughs> Lots of people are going, oh, why is Frankie tied up? I never saw Frankie tied tied up before. Was he bad? <laughs> no. Frankie wasn't bad. Believe it or not, Frankie's favorite place is under that deck. We don't know why. He loves being out there. And, like, the chipmunks come, like, four feet from him, and he just watches them, and he watches the little juncos pecking the ground. He just lays there and watches them. So if I'm busy or I'm, I'm inside and he wants to be outside, I don't just let him wander around and get himself into trouble. He stays safe and happy out there. And then I'm happy that he's safe out there. So it's a win-win. He just loves to be out there. But he's a good boy. 
Lots of people comment quite often that Frankie is living the life of Riley. And I, I want to elaborate on that because, yes, he is in, in a, an amazing way. When we were looking for a Border Collie 10 years ago, as I mentioned before, we went to the Border Collie Rescue and we fell in love with this dog. Oh, my God, we wanted to adopt him and his name was Riley. Beautiful Border Collie. And we got refused because we didn't have a fenced-in yard. And no matter how hard we tried, we couldn't get Riley. And that's when we shopped and we found a puppy, which is Frankie. So, yes, Frankie is living the life of Riley. But really the life that Riley would have had if we had a fenced-in yard. And I wonder what kind of life the old boy had. Anyway. Well, I'm going to do one more question. I get several variations of this question because you, you know I have a cabin in New York and I have this place. So people want to know, like, what do I like best? What are the pros and cons? Why do I have two cabins? What brought me out to New York? Et cetera, et cetera. They want to kind of know behind the scenes. What do I like about this place and what do I like about the other place? All right. This cabin here, sentimental value. I've, this was where we came up when I was a kid. So I fell in love with these woods. And what I love about here is, um, for one thing, the sentimental value. We're surrounded by miles and miles of forest, and it's just beautiful, and it's quiet, and you rarely hear any noise filter through the trees. Um, it's mountainous. It's pristine. It's just a wonderful place. And after being gone from New Hampshire for 13 years, I realized how much I missed being here. You know, place like home, right? Now, New Hampshire has a lot of laws, but the laws make sense. There's, there's logic to them, okay? They're justifiable. But, you know, here the property taxes are kind of high, but yet you don't pay sales tax and you don't have income tax and like the dump fees are included in the tax that I pay and there's some freedom here you know I don't have to wear a helmet if I don't want to I don't want to have to wear a seat belt if I don't want to it's not mandatory that I put insurance on my car even though I do but I don't have to I don't need a permit if I to carry a handgun even even a concealed one Lori can go to the store buy a handgun, load it, put it in her purse, no permit required, and that's a wonderful thing. People should be able to protect themselves. You know, so there's a lot of uh, really cool things about New Hampshire. But New York has got a lot of really cool things. There's a lot of wild game. The land is cheap. Um, it fulfills some of the dreams that I probably wouldn't have been able to fulfill here in New Hampshire, like to own that much land. You know, I had almost 300 acres up there. And I've got the cabin. Now, the topography is different. We were above the Adirondacks. It's really flat farm country, which is a plus in many ways, where if I want a garden, it's very easy. I want to build something, it's easy again. You dig a hole, there was barely any rocks in the soil. There was a lot of benefits of it. So here you want to dig a hole, and you're going to hit a rock. It's mountainous. It's difficult. So there's pros and cons. Now, I plan to keep the New York cabin for a while. I'm not sure. I talked about selling it, but I really don't know. If someone comes along with the money, maybe I'll sell it, but I don't really know because I like the pros and cons. There, there's some species. There's walleye. There's big muskies in the river, huge carp, big pike, stuff that we don't have here. There's some ponds here that have some pike, but it's not comparable to the fishing in New York. So there's pros and cons. The little cabin in New York, it's just what it is. It's little, and I love it because it's little. This place is really too big in a lot of ways to use as a camp. But to live here, it's about the perfect size. So there's pros and cons to everything and everywhere. The things I like about here, I don't like there, and vice versa. Yeah. So that's all I'm going to answer here today. We got some venison burritos I'm going to make up, and then I'm going to go and split some wood. 
and enjoy the day. So enjoy the rest of your Sunday. All the best to you, and God bless. Frank and the boss out walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun, taking life a day at a time. Best friends until the end Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss